Hi everyone, welcome to series three, episode eight of the Hidden London Hangouts. If you're new to this, what do we do? We take London's best secrets and we tell you about them. It's really, really good. And we're doing this all the way through lockdown and beyond. And do you know what? We had big news this week about when that might be over, but there's plenty still to come from this series and the ones to come. Uh, I don't do this on my own. Uh, I've got three amazing people from the London Transport Museum to help guide us through the history of the capital and also make us laugh as well. First of all, Chris Nix, hello. Hello, Alex. I hope you're well. It's time for uh, an enigmatic station today. It's not going to bother you, but apparently we can have haircuts uh, very shortly as well, which is quite good because um, I'm starting to look a bit like Bill Nye, actually. I, it's quite good, I, it? <laughs> I, I, could get, I could get my beard done. <laughs> could you? I can do your beard. Uh, Sydney Holloway's here. She's back. Welcome back, Sids. I'm back. Thank you so much. Uh, exciting. Sorry, I, didn't, I, I couldn't be with you last week. I was uh, busy filming, but uh, excited about where we're going today. Very excited as well that we might be able to meet up outside uh, from the 29th of March, according to the guidelines set out this week. Can't wait! Laura Hilton Brown, are you delighted that we might be able to go for a port night in the um, gardens? I am super, super, super excited that we might be able to meet soon. And um, please don't get your hair cut because you remind me of one of the tea birds in Greece. And I absolutely Ooh. love that look. So please keep it for a bit longer. You know, I don't really have much of a choice because I keep being told that with short hair, I look scary. It's quite weird, really. Do I look scary? Do I look less scary with long hair? I don't know. I feel, I you feel look sort like of German. Ah, <laughs> feeling dunk. Yeah. Uh, today, <laughs> today uh, we're going to a station which um, it was a bit of a kind of a forgotten station, really. No one really used it. It looks very nice. Still looks quite nice, actually. But we're going to learn more about Marlborough Road on the Metropolitan Line. Chris, kick us all off, because this is a station which was weird. Not many people even took photographs of this station, did they? Yeah, this was a somewhat elusive station. And if you've already watched the episode on Lords that we did some weeks ago, then you'll have some clues as to the fortunes of this station. So Marlborough Road Station opened in 1868 on the 13th of April uh, as part of the Metropolitan and St John's Wood Railway. And it did actually have a reasonably long life. It lasted all the way through until 20th of November 1939. And again, that date might be familiar if you watch the Lords episode, also the date that that station closed, because when the Bakerloo line extension opened, it paralleled the route. And uh, so the Metropolitan line was free to close those stations as they just weren't really needed. But when the station originally opened, it was part of a single track line uh, from Baker Street running north towards Finchley Road. And the stations were effectively the passing loops. So it wasn't a double track. You had to operate trains very carefully so they weren't running into one another. Um, and so it, it had some restrictions as to how frequently uh, trains could operate. The station building is, is quite a grand one. We'll see shortly it was built in London stock bricks, that classic kind of yellowish uh, clay uh, colour. Um, and um, it had a lovely little uh, tea room in it and so on. So it's quite a charming station. Problem was not many people used it. And that is why at a stroke <clears throat> that station is no longer with us today. Now, the thing is, Laura, I've got to talk to you about this because we can do a little comparison with your favourite station, Aldwych. Now, what do we think of this? Aldwych station, 450 passengers per day when it's shut. Marlborough Road, 40 passengers per day. Its fate was kind of sealed, wasn't it, really? It's such a shame, isn't it? Because um, th there's something that I kind of feel quite sad about these, these stations that kind of, you know, lose their way a little bit. They're built... Um, and they just don't have that footfall and as many uh, kind of passengers to kind of warrant keeping it open. And obviously it was really close to Lords and you've got the cricket matches. So sometimes it was super busy, but I think on the day-to-day -day basis, it wasn't so busy. And sometimes the more elusive ones sometimes have like really great stories about them. And I know we're gonna tackle some of those today, um, but there is something that's a little bit sad, isn't it? When they just become a building that's disused and we just kind of, you know, you could be forgiven for just going past it and not really knowing anything about it or even where it is. And City, queen of our collection of photographs is always the first to go onto the database to find the best photographs. There's nothing really of Marble Road, but Sids, I can tell you, as a result of this episode, we are doubling the museum's collection of pictures and video about this thing. Queen of collection, it's all yours at the end of this episode. 
Yeah, good. Well, I mean, we did have a little, I did have a little look around to see what photos we had of the site, because honestly, I don't really know much, much about that, that, that um, particular station. Um, I tend to, yeah, I tend to leave most of Metroland and the Metropolitan to Mr. Nix, as he's a, a far uh, more reliable source than I am on these matters. Um, but yeah, there's a hardly any photographs taken of it at all. But I, I mean, if only 40 people are using it a day, maybe that, that gives us some uh, a clue as to why that is. But now I was mostly delighted to hear that the station building is still there, which is so rare, particularly with these old stations, um, like we saw with Lords, it's, it's no longer there. So I'm excited for everyone to see that. Well, it's interesting you should say that because a Mr. Nix offered me a mandate again today. Would you like to go to St. John's Wood to have a look at this station? And I have to be honest with you, after the last mandate, we sent me out in the snow and it was raining today. And I thought, no, I'm not going. So he sent him on his own. If you walk up Finchley Road, you're basically just following the line of the old Metropolitan Line, uh, which is underneath the ground beneath my feet. And uh, sooner or later, you're going to go past some of those disused stations. Well, Lords is behind me, Marlborough Road is somewhere in front of me. So I'm gonna flip the camera and well, say when you see it. Suspiciously large blank wall next to us. And as we come over, take a look at this cream building. That is the former Marlborough Road station of the Metropolitan Line. Uh, now we should go over and have a little closer look at it. Looks quite grand, some of the arched features that we might expect to see with the former Metropolitan Line stations. And as we go around the side, we can see it's actually quite a big building, which extends a long way back to accommodate the stairs down to platform, as well as the booking hall. And there we are. I'm just going to say one thing to you. In fact, three words, Chris. Green Cross Code? Oh. <laughs> I, did, I did check very carefully before I crossed. Lovely. I guess it's hard when you're doing a walking shot and you want to try and, you know, not have to cut it off. So we'll give you a pass on that one. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's very, that's very generous. <clears throat> Get away with murder, this lovely boy, honestly. Um, what an interesting setup that even today that station building still exists and there's no really cool shots to come as well and um, Chris we can go back in time can't we and take a look at the station in its well I say heyday but I mean there weren't really many people going through it at the best of times I bet that cafe didn't make much money yeah it has to be said um just to, thinking about uh, images I scoured our depot to see if there are any unscanned ones they're really on and what you do notice about the images is just that there aren't any people in them <laughs> <laughs> wow Oh, Lord, <clears throat> honestly. See, this thing was, Laura, in the cafe, they had so few people using it that they used to bring the stock in as scones and they sold it as rock cakes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I absolutely love, love, love about that image? That Does. street lamp. Nice, isn't it? It's pretty that fancy, is isn't it? Beauty. Mm. Look at that. I mean, these stations are stunning, aren't they, really? And when you look at, I mean, I, it's an awful thing to say, but when you look at what they've done to it, painted it cream, I just think, what a shame. Because that brickwork, I mean, it was, was it not yellow brick stock? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it was sort of yellow, yeah. sandy. Like, you know, London, London stock, as it's known. Yeah. yeah. Do you know something about that? This sort of reminds me of, of like, I don't know, like, Italy or Spain or something. Do you know what I mean? Like you yes. can almost think and see that that in yeah in big cities in like Spain or somewhere. I, I wonder is that Ireland because of is its little uh, kind of veranda out the front, which is now suddenly gone as well. Is it that perhaps? Yeah, I guess it, I think it's that, and also the arch windows. It reminds me of sort of places in Lisbon and and yeah. and things like that. Absolutely, absolutely. Or the little train on Mallorca that takes you up to Soyer. All little, little buildings that have been completely kept, or even a funicular railway in Bergamo in Italy. It's those little old stations, those little old buildings. Yeah. And yet that was right in the middle of London with a little tea room. Look at it, you can even make it out, can't you? The name of it, Tea Rooms. Amazing. 
spears and ponds, just like the uh, the one at Lords. Now, was was spears and ponds a chain then, if you like, of cafes? I, I presume so, because there, there were a number of them. I mean, the Lions uh, tea rooms we've all heard of, um, yeah. uh, ubiquitous around the country. I'm not so sure about Spears and Pond. I'm sure somebody will write in. Yeah. Um, um, go on, uh, Sid. I was going to say, um, I actually used to live around that part of town only for a brief moment back in 2015. I don't think I ever walked past that. Where is it, Chris? So this photo is stood uh, on the Finchley Road, um, mm -hmm. so it's about halfway between uh, Lords and Swiss Cottage. And when you look, because we can show oh, you, really? what it is, Matt, can't we, where it was, Chris, so we can get a better idea of, of where yeah. it was, because it was Metline, wasn't it? So um, let's have a look at the map. So there we go. Um, if right you look right at the top of the map, mm -hmm. almost in the middle, Marlborough Road. Um, so it's just north of St John's Wood Road. And just to, as you said at the beginning, just to, to recap, this was a, a kind of a spur off the Metropolitan Line from Baker Street, wasn't it? It was kind of like a separate company. But That's right. Yeah, so the Metropolitan and St John's Wood Railway uh, built that stretch of line in uh, 1868, and then it was adopted into the main Metropolitan Line Railway. Marvellous stuff. And... Um, so it, I mean, it's interesting to see that all sort of printed out. It's, I mean, it's fascinating, really, to think that that was um, Metline that's now been all closed off. But interestingly, unlike St John's Wood Road, St John's Wood, Lords, whatever it was called, um, Marlborough Road, actually, as we'll see later in the episode, um, there's a lot more left there now to see, especially if you're eagle-eyed on trains. And we'll come to that a bit later on, won't we? We will. And, and it, every time you use the Metropolitan Line between Baker Street and Finchley Road, you go through that station. It's just it might be going too quickly for you to, to spot it. Um, and here, here we've got a, um, a poster uh, from the Metropolitan Line advertising that it's, got to, it's brand new moving stairways, otherwise known as escalators. And you can see there that list, that roll call of disused stations now. St Johnswood Road, Marlborough Road, Swiss Cottage. The original one uh, through to, to Finchley Road. And I love on here as well, Sid, the fact that Kilburn's original name, Kilburn Brondesbury, was on there as well. So now <laughs> it's called Kilburn, he's got like changes of station name. And even the typeface is fascinating, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's not Johnston, that's for sure. No. Um, it's cutie though. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, that whole area of London, I find quite fascinating. Uh, as I say, I only lived for a bit near Swiss Cottage for a while, but, um, you know, Chris, you used to live around West Hampstead, didn't you? So you're That's more right, yeah. familiar with that area. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's very interesting. I don't know, yeah. It's interesting to see how things have changed, isn't it, really? And, um, you know, uh, Laura, the, one of the things that we do now, of course, we all touch in and touch out with our Oyster cards and credit cards and whatever. Um, Chris is about to show us a paper ticket. Do you remember those, anybody? Mm -hmm. remember, look at that. Look at it, for goodness sake. You see, even the stamp at the bottom. Do you remember those it, little chewy things? That punch. You, punch. Punch ticket. Yeah, ticket punch. Oh, yeah. Um, oh. Now... Now that is a, a great segue between season two and season three, isn't it? Yes. Yes. You've got Trafalgar Square, uh, which we did in season two, Charity. to Marlborough Road. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you could literally go, Law, from Charing Cross, Trafalgar Square, to Marlborough Road, first class ticket. Would you? Would that be a journey you'd love to do, Law? Do you know this is super interesting because I don't um, I don't hang out in North London that much. I just I moved down here, went straight to the south, worked in Central, and it's just not an area that I kind of know that well. But as Siddy said before, it's not a station that's kind of really been on my radar either because on the Hidden London program, it's not a station that we'd ever be able to do kind of physical tours at, um, and it's not until we started discussing it as a team that it really kind of you know popped onto my radar so this is all super interesting because it's really quite new for me as well well this is a bit like the it feels a bit like the ugly person that you date just because you want to be nice isn't it because this oh alex not what i was saying no because um, it's a station that even photographers forgot no one seems to really have been ever that bothered about marlborough road and yet when we look at what there is now it's actually Pictorially, it's actually quite cute. It is quite a handsome, handsome station. Um, the, the 
A couple of things on here that I think are worth just having a look at, though. This, this, is, uh, this ticket dates from 1906. Not interesting in itself, but just look at the top where it was bought. So Trafalgar Square is part of the Baker Street and Waterloo Railway. Mm -hmm. And if you look down towards the bottom, you can see this is a first class ticket. But of course, the Baker Street and Waterloo Railway doesn't have classes on it, but the Metropolitan Railway does. It has different compartments uh, for different classes of tickets. So it very carefully says at the bottom, first class on the Metropolitan Railway. Yeah. So detail. They would... I, find it, I find it so fascinating because really like what, I can't imagine wanting to pay more to be in first class for like five to 10 minutes on the tube. Like what would be the difference? Um, I suppose it's about, like, about, about threepence uh, yeah. is the answer. That's well, it's loads different. of money. Like if you think <laughs> yeah, about it, yeah. it is, just yeah. for, you know, just to be segregated from, you know, people for 10 minutes. It highlights again just just how difficult uh, declassification was to people of that time. That that was still something that people would want to pay for. On the um, on the Patreon episode for this, if you if you you'll find out more in a minute, and we'll tell you about Patreon. But um, we'll be explaining what first, second, and third class was. I just love the idea. I mean, I'd definitely be in third class if it was cheaper. Why pay more? <laughs> uh, so I love the idea that there was a first class operation. Uh, um, Good stuff. What's next? As Sibby says, that they've paid that extra just for two stops in a first yeah. class compartment. <laughs> money to burn. Just, money yeah. to burn. <laughs> and Flash Harry. Yeah, exactly. So, and, and of course, if, can we have a look at where they might have bought a ticket like that yes, from? Yes, at yes, yes. <laughs> I'm so, totally going first and leaving you three in third just to let you know. Are you? Oh, oh, so. you think you're, we'll, we'll put our faces <laughs> up to the glass and go, Laura, <laughs> let us in. I'll pretend so actually, I Laura and I would go to the <laughs> Laura and I would go to the ladies only compartment. Oh, oh yes, good idea, good idea. Much more civilized in there. Um, now, who knows what this thing is called? Anybody? Anybody? We we do. I think we do, girls, don't we? I we do. Yeah, I know. Yes. Yes. I good. Do. Good. Yes, um, I do know. Laura, <laughs> Laura, what is it called? <laughs> oh well, I don't want to pronounce it wrong. Oh, go for it. A persimeter. <laughs> well done. Hooray. A persimeter. Okay, we got it wrong. So that's all, we, right. it's all fine. We've got one of this sort in our collection. At, uh, it's at Acton down at our oh. depot. Um, every, time I, every time I read persimeter, I've, in my head, sometimes it go, comes as pessimistic. Yeah. <laughs> I was worried I was going to say the wrong word for that very reason. Yeah. So. So, so this was Chris. This, the, the whole yeah. idea of a persimeter is that one person stands in the box and they yep. can give out tickets and take off tickets from people, can't they? It's yeah, like it's, it's in and, and out bit. So th this photo was uh, taken in 1934. It's um, it's when the, the station is in the last uh, few years of its life. And the persimeter has been introduced because it's a more efficient form of uh, booking hall. You can have a person in there dealing with those 40 people a day uh, on both sides of the booths rather than having one window where you might get a flurry you might have two people using the station at the same time uh, <laughs> and you have a queue forming at the ticket window so facilities are a way of just more efficiently using staff to sell and collect tickets and you can just see on the left hand side there the kind of the entry barrier uh, which I'm sure nobody walked underneath. And I'll tell you something else I like as well as a bit of a fan of Victorian houses I love those doors and they're, I think they're mm. called collection mouldings around the panels. Look at them. They are, now that is a door I'd love on my lounge. And, and look, look at timber, timber panelled walls as well next to it. Beautiful, collection mouldings. There's one for your word books, kids. Um, Put that into that. Google carefully. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's quite there, interesting. Yeah. Do you see that? Is that yeah? So you've got test match at Lords, but look at the way in sign. That's not Johnston. No, no. look at the way the no entry sign is a roundel. I love. Yeah. You, you'd also you would normally expect in kind of the normal rules of the road that you would you would be on the left hand side going in, wouldn't you? And on the no. on the right hand side they're coming out, but they've they've flipped it for whatever reason. I also it's it's. It scares wonder, is it, that so few people use this station when 
on the uh, test match day, they've got a notice saying, yeah, don't use this station, go to uh, St John's Wood Road. <laughs> <laughs> They're actively thought, driving people away from the station. Absolutely. But it's funny you should say about walking on the right, because it's always been a very odd feeling for me when you are standing on the right on an escalator on the tube. Mm. Because you'd always imagine you'd overtake on the right rather than yeah. stand on the left. I, I don't know why. I, I, think, I think that's just simply about using your dominant hand for most people to hold on to the handrail. I mean, that's quite presumptuous, Chris, if I'm honest. But, um, no, but it's also uh, like, I would, yeah. I mean... You don't. You overtake on the right, don't you? If I mean, not you do, but uh, but when you're overtaking on the right, you're not using your right hand for anything particularly dexterous. So, um, for 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 holding on purposes, I think that's why it's the convention is stand on the right on an escalator. Well, that is lovely, and that is a persimeter. They're bolection mouldings. That's a roundel, and that's a way in, and it's all lovely. Now, this station obviously looks gorgeous, but it really didn't get much use. That's the tragedy of it. And as time went on, uh, numbers fell. Um, almost passenger censuses. Is it censuses or sensei? Huh? I think sense, I think sensei is the like the master in karate. Sensei. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so whatever the word is, whatever they did, they martial they, arts. Yeah, I was going to say it wouldn't be a big job at that station to count the passengers. But anyway, there were only forty a day. But um, eventually, the decision was basically to shut it because stuff changed in the area, didn't it? There was an extension to the Bakerloo line, and suddenly this station and Lords weren't really needed anymore. Yeah, so the reason why Marlborough Road finally met its end is because the Bakerloo line was being extended. We talked about this with the episode about Lord, Lords, not a singular Lord, oh, but Lords. Lord. <laughs> Lord, Lord. The single Lord of <laughs> North West London, um, no, Lords, is that uh, the Bakerloo line was being extended uh, in tunnel, of course, from Baker Street up to Finchley Road, where it joined up, thank you, Christopher, joined up the old tracks of, um, of the Metropolitan and kind of took parts of that over up to, uh, you know, further up to, what is it, Stanmore, because that's basically the Jubilee line today. Um, so if we just zoom in, Chris, sort of between Baker Street and St. John's Wood, please. We go. Um, you can kind of see that Lords was just there, and Marlborough Road was just beyond uh, there. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah, it's just about where St John's Wood, the modern St John's Wood, is marked yeah. on. Mar Mar uh, Marlborough Road's very near there. Yeah, really interesting. interesting, though, isn't it? That it was so close. I mean, it, it's it, they clearly wanted the Metropolitan Line to be an express service, didn't they? Happily yeah. close stations on the Met because they knew there was a nearby Bakerloo mm. line. So, so in a yeah. funny sort of way, the Met line was kind of like a first class line, wasn't it really? Faster, <laughs> further, everything else. And they were the, stations close in because they knew they could get yeah. people to get down on the Bakerloo line. And also what's <laughs> weird, about, weird to me about the Metropolitan, sorry Chris, is that um, every other part of London, i.e. sort of the suburbs and each corner of London has got its suburban railways but they're all national rail you know like you know i'm in southwest so i you know southwest trains you guys are in southeast etc but the metro you know northwest is the only part of london that's got a link with the tube because because of the metropolitan line so it's just and very interesting you're right the met line always regarded themselves as kind of a proper grown-up railway for exactly that reason they are the northwest of most of the northwest's uh, suburban railway uh, so yeah, you're absolutely right. Me and Laura, the Southeast kids, I'll tell you something, Laura, can you imagine how nice it would be if we had tube lines down here? That'd be great, I, wouldn't it? I know, we always, we lost out, didn't we, with that? It's unfortunate because there seems to be such a lovely expanse of uh, kind of ability to travel up the North and then there's like, the Northern line, <laughs> and that's, that's it. That's it. Yeah, and a bit yeah. of the Southern line that just dangled there for a while before it became the overground. I mean, they had so many in northwest London that they, they didn't even know what to do with the stations. They were they're actually shutting them because it's like, there's an use <laughs> using this one, we just close it. They could have sent it southeast. Pick it up, buy a brick and move it southeast. 
One of the things that amused me about this, though, is there were so few people using the, the station that when when they did decide to, to close it in 1939, a grand total of 131 people signed the petition <laughs> against it closing, which just shows, you know, even when it was uh, against the wall, it, uh, there, there weren't enough people to support it. It's Amazing. crazy. Amazing. Now, Still um, 131 sad people, though, isn't it, that wanted their rush hour train to be able to take them into London or home again. <laughs> But they couldn't overtake all of those people further north who wanted it to be an express service, as, as City was saying. It's almost like you know, 99 red balloons or 10 green bottles, 131 sad passengers. <laughs> um, but of course, what is left there now? Because while Chris was down there earlier having a bit of a route round outside, we sent him to poke his camera over the walls. Marlborough Road Station was built during the Victorian era, and so the trains ran to it were powered by steam. That meant that the lines could only just be below ground in cuttings. And so that station is built on top of the cutting with a canopy over the top of it. And you might just be able to hear the trains running underneath my feet. Now, if I flick the camera the other way around, we'll have a look and see what we can see of that. So looking in front of me, we can see that we're on a bridge and we get our first clue that this belongs to the Metropolitan Railway with MR6, bridge number six. And if we look over the top, we have the track in the cutting leading to Marble Road Station. Chris, can you go back to the, the, the end of that? And can we see a, the, what's there now? Can we see down into that cutting? Yeah, sure. Now that's fascinating. Now, Laura, now we love a bit of brickwork, we love a bit of tile work. That still looks like a tube station, doesn't it? Or an underground station. We can see the recognition there. Unlike at Lords, where there's nothing really left, at least there's a bit of a bit of memorabilia in brick. Do you know what? Looking at that picture as well, for some reason, it really reminds me of the area around King's Cross. Yes. Am I way off? Or do you know what I mean with the red brick building behind there and then the bridge as well? No, you're know. right. That's same yeah. style of construction of those kind of open cuttings and uh, the buildings around similar era. And can I just double check where they've cleaned up the brick there on the left hand side? Is that the colour that would have been the station? Yeah, so that, oh. that's what you'd call London stock brick. Um, so that yellowy colour, it's just the colour of the clay that you find in London. See, that is so much nicer than the painted beige building. <laughs> And blast it immediately, everybody. <laughs> yeah, let's get back to some proper colour. But that's oh, amazing. I'd I, love to do yeah. that. You, you, you know what it is, don't you? It's every time somebody graffitis it, you got to paint it over, uh, and that that's why it's that neutral colour. People stop right. graffitiing these things, then it'll you can leave them as they are. Incredible. Should we lease it? Because didn't it used to be a restaurant or something, Chris? Yeah. So it. it was a steak restaurant originally and then turned yeah. into a Chinese restaurant till I think about 2009, 2010, something like that. And now it's I never empty. went. I never went when I lived in West oh, Hampstead. That was a terrible. I think <laughs> I reckon we should lease it out and uh, make it a hidden London hangout clubhouse. That sounds like a great excellent. Idea. We could search it. In fact, we could get Laura to run the, um, uh, we could call it the Holloway and Hilton Brown Cafe. Ooh. <laughs> that would be actually sounds pretty good. I'd go there. Yeah. And Laura can make us scones. Um, you can make your goyozas because you're very good at that, aren't you, Sids? I'm good at goyozas. You're right. Yeah. I think, Alex, I think you're going to need to use City's first name rather than a surname because otherwise people might go to the wrong part of London if they're, <laughs> they're looking for it. It'd <laughs> be good, wouldn't it? We could do it. <laughs> Laura's got cakes. It'd be fantastic. We could do fusion. So let, let, me, let me get this right. We're going to lease it out. City and I are going to bake and you two are just going to be there to eat the product. We're going to make Oh, snowmen. and probably drink port whilst that is. <laughs> We're going to I make said, snowmen. We've got a raw deal, Sid. We've got yeah. a raw deal. Uh, can I just say, I'm, I fear I'm going to absolutely crush your dreams of a business here because the reason it's no longer a restaurant is it's now a substation for the underground. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, what a shame. <laughs> I saw that I saw they had a big rear entrance, but I didn't think any more about it. Now mm. let's let's go down onto the platforms, shall we, and see what there is down there, or at least platform level. Because Mr. Nix, I mean, he did very well. As I say, we've he's doubled the stock of shots for the museum. Um, this was you were 
pointing your camera through a signal failure, weren't you? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> well, back in the summer, I I'd had to go into the office uh, briefly and it was a glorious sunny day, really nice and hot. And um, just to make up for the fact that it'd been quite a nice day going into town, uh, there was a signal failure on the uh, on the Metropolitan line, which meant that the, the, the train was sat at each signal for about three minutes at a time. And you can imagine how happy I was about that. Um, but then I suddenly realised after I'd been stood at one signal uh, for a minute that um, I, was, I was somewhere that I wanted to be. And I started taking photos and they look like this. We've all had that feeling. <laughs> there you go. Um, I got stopped for a grand total of three minutes inside um, Marlborough Road Station. And so I finally got, I've been, I've been through there so many times, but doing you know, 40 mile an hour, you can't take a photo. Um, so there we are. That's sort of lovely. A bit of platform, isn't there? Now that's presumably left like that in case they have to evacuate a train, is it? Yeah, emergency extraction point. The, these are quite common on disused stations. If ever the train, um, you know, failed uh, on that part of the track, it's a place where uh, passengers can be taken off the train safely and uh, led back to street level. Um, a lot, and the emergency extraction point it doesn't make you sound like a dodgy dentist, doesn't it? <laughs> But just look at how all those, those lovely arches that we saw in the surface level building are repeated down here. Uh, and even though they've been filled in and treated abominably, you can still see they're quite charming down there. Mm, they really nice are. It's, yeah, it's rather nice in it, Sid, that it's all still there in that sense, because it does yeah. kind of make your journey through as it zips through the mat line. A little, something to have a look at, really. Observer's Guide 2, Disused Stations. Yeah, something exciting. I wonder, actually, since it's an, 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 uh, a substation, if we could somehow visit it. Um, it's always like quite difficult thing. to visit substations just because you've got to get so many clearances and, you know, uh, because, of course, it's a yeah. sensitive area. But it would be kind of cool. Well, I, and I'll, if you get I'll it wrong, up, it'll kill you. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. Wait, so I don't mind. I'll, I'll even go earthed. I don't mind. I mean, it'd be quite but, a Place to go. I, I feel that the, the large sign on the outside saying uh, danger of death, which I, I don't think I photographed, but uh, oh, fair <laughs> but enough. Yes, the, okay. front, the front doors do have that on there, like all uh, all substations. So, uh, yeah, um, glorious. we'll ask. Yeah, but, pretty glorious. But one, one for a possible, um, you know, picture gathering exercise law. I'm sure we can wangle that. Maybe, maybe not. Um, and we've got another one, uh, Chris, at the platform. We what do. One showing uh, the the window on the stairs. So so that when it was in use, would that have been yeah. glazed or was it just open? No, it was it was open because all of this uh, was underneath a glass canopy. Right. Uh, so there was a wrought iron and, and glass canopy over the cutting to keep you dry on the platforms. That was that was removed in uh, 1967, I believe, mm. um, and uh, you're just falling into disrepair. But so um, yeah, these these stairs just came down from the ticket hall to that little platform we were just looking at. Um, Rather, rather charming, I think. Lovely. And do you know what, Law? Thank you very much for that, Chris. And Laura, the frustration that we didn't know whether we could find enough stuff out about, I think we've done a pretty manful job, don't you? I thought those images were great, actually. And I can just imagine Chris's utter excitement, like leaping up on the train <laughs> while everyone else is just annoyed that it's a hot, sweaty day and they're kind of stuck in this, uh, you know, signal failure. And there's Chris snapping away. Um, the first of those two photos, so uh, the kind of platform side rather than the, the stairwell, what I particularly loved about that image is there's just a little bit of a glint of sunshine just in the top right hand corner and it's just it's just glowing down onto, onto the picture because I know it's just cable and track and gravel, but I think all four of us really liked that shot um, and it does make me miss just us lot going around and goofing around in these places. Not that we can goof around in the substation, obviously, <laughs> um, but... Um, I, I just love that. that little, you can you see that little bit of sunlight just yeah. in that top right hand corner? I mean, A, sunshine's lovely, but B, the freedom to do stuff. I mean, we are getting quite excited in the UK about the fact that there might actually be a slight chink of light in the end of this tunnel because it's been quite an epic year of lockdown. And um, so the idea of being able to go explore with you guys is very, very appetizing. But um, thank you very much indeed. Now then, this time last week, we were getting ready to do a Patreon live episode of the Hidden London Hang Up. 
which is the one that we do for you guys who very kindly give a little bit of money to the museum every month to um, take care of it, really, in these straightened times. And Chris, the stuff that we do only for the fans is getting bigger by the week, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. So we've braved our first episode. It's really nice to be able to chat with our, our Uber fans in there. Um, and uh, yeah, so we thought it'd be quite nice to show you a little bit of what went on when we met up with our fans live. I have to say, there's another a fantastic episode to come. Chris, we're going yeah, trout fishing. We have a trout. Mm, quick, let's let's get some fish in here. I feel like we should start like a sort of a children's craft club. You want at least one of those, don't you, Alex? Do you know you're so naughty? I look. I just looked down. I just looked down. Yeah. I didn't do anything. I just looked down. You're a beast. But why, why are you looking down, Alex? Uh, just having a look at uh, the houses down there. Uh, uh, Laura, yeah. would you rescue this, please, darling? <laughs> You know, I, I actually couldn't stop myself laughing out loud. I like how there's a, yeah. there's a one round or one place and then the diamond round or further down. Yeah. Well, it's all right, because those guys with the saws, they'll be half inching those next. So, uh... <laughs> you know the revolving doors like you can get a hotel? <laughs> <laughs> and you both are like... <laughs> if there's an edit point in there, feel free to choose it. Very simple question. Where was this photo taken? Any other <laughs> Ian says Watford, Stuart says Chesham. We always take a bag of wet wipes. This is Not just... for insidious reasons, for <laughs> the fact that it's very dirty. <laughs> so, like, no Patreons. Uh, you've had 20 minutes in our company so far. You'll be thinking, that's an evening I can't get back. Uh, <laughs> see, we have loads of fun, and it's actually even more fun on the later episodes of The Hang Up. So we have loads and loads of fun and we'd love you to be part of it too. Chris, if anyone wants to get involved with this Patreon lark, how do they do it? It's very easy. Visit the museum's website, ltmuseum.co.uk, find the Hidden London section, find the Hangout section beneath that, and then you'll find the membership uh, page in there. Uh, and you can select what level you'd like to support and uh, how much you'd like to see of what we do after the shows. Good work. Uh, notes, queries and questions, as always, a chance to have your comments and questions read out. Uh, Jess Collard says, the New York episode for me, this is a couple of episodes back, right? The one that we went over to New York, lovely stuff. The New York episode was amazing. And I love the enthusiasm from all of you and getting the excitement of wanting to visit came back to me too. But to get glimpses at this time when travel isn't possible, totally made up for not being able to travel. And um, Ian Kelly says, honestly, after seeing the Metroland episode, which was my absolute favourite hangout so far. Can you imagine? Um, uh, I feel quite emotional. All day today, I was thinking about how much I'm looking forward to moving to a new part of London in a few weeks, but hearing and seeing you three go through all the amazing bits of Metroland reminded me how much I'm going to miss the place. I'm so glad we've evoked such feeling, Law. Do you know what? It was a really lovely episode, wasn't it? And I think... Um we all realised as soon as we started it that it was so much bigger than what we were going to do in one episode. Um, and I think when when people were, uh, you know, watching it on the Saturday and um, the chat was happening, um, people were like, you know, thinking of other things that we could do. And we'd, we'd already thought this is too big for one episode and it was really exciting that there was going to be loads more to do. Um, but that's a really lovely message. That kind of makes it all worthwhile, doesn't it? Yeah, isn't it? It's really, really cute. Uh, David Smith sent a picture in he said, I thought you might like this picture. I've had it in my collection for a long time. Original print, thank you very much for that, with permission to run. Bank station being rebuilt after serious bomb damage during World War II. Mr. Nix, look at it. It's a cracker that, isn't it? Um, it was a one of the catastrophic bombings of a tube station in the Second World War that, um, demonstrating that the tube wasn't impervious to, to attack. Uh, basically, the the, the bomb that landed went straight through the roof of the straight through the road the roof of the ticket hall which was just beneath the road surface at, at bank and detonated and uh, killed quite a lot of people created a huge amount of destruction um, and this is the process of rebuilding it now this is quite an unusual photo but it shows the temporary bailey bridge just at the top right hand side there you can see that that um that kind of girder structure um, is where a temporary roadway is being built over the top of the rebuilding works of uh, Bank Station itself. So although I've not seen that photo before, I know exactly the story behind it. And that yeah. that is 
quite a sight to behold, isn't it? Great photo, yeah. Huge crater in the ground, basically. So this it happened in January of 1941. And it was one of the, the kind of catalyst events that prompted the building of the deep shelters. Incredible. And it's such a great cross-sectional photo because we all our eyes are drawn to that bit there. But look down below. There's more girders and stuff. I mean, it's just incredible. Yeah, how deep yeah I mean, the, 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 the bomb did a vast amount of damage, not just in the ticket hall level, but to the layer below that. Uh, but you've got to admire that kind of spirit of keep calm and carry on, aren't you? So like, mm. we're obviously going to rebuild, but we're also going to build a temporary roadway over the top so we can just carry on Amazing. running traffic. There's a, we've got one in the collection which shows a bus going over that Bailey Bridge after it was uh, after it was constructed. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for sending this stuff in because we absolutely love receiving it and it teaches us something as well. Such an absolute delight. Dan Gooding says, just watch the Metroland episode and I just love the friendship between you all. It's not even fake, is it, Sids? We actually like each other. I know, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> no, we do. I mean, honestly, so there are weeks where um, you guys really pull me through and, and just the support and love. I mean, love you guys, as you well know. But also, thank you for noticing. Um, I guess I mean honestly you couldn't you couldn't fake this I think we'd have to be very good actors. It's very funny I think that lockdown has created really sort of strong friendships between us all really I think we are like family really now which is which is bizarre because for a, a large amount of the time that we've been talking to each other and we talk every day um, we've been doing this on Zoom. Uh, yeah. which is a very very strange experience. Um, it's not all plain sailing though because uh, Chris uh, and me have received messages to say we got something wrong. Oh no, what did you get wrong, boys? Thanks. Are you going first or am I, Alex? Do you know what? You probably want to get this out of the way. Do you want to go first? Okay, um, yeah. yeah. So um, we had this from uh, Sean um, Esquire um, saying, um, you know how we talked about a lens, um, oh, yeah. a certain type of lens? What did you, yeah. what do you call it? Well, I would have said Fresnel. Yeah. Um, so did I. Um, we all did, in fact. But um, I, I got a um, how to say it phonetically guide here, um, mm. which is Fresnel. Um, Fresnel. And it does say um, Fresnel is how you say Fresnel. We expect it from that Alex Grundon, but not you, Mr. Nix. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just out point, of control. You uh, point lost. Points lost were earned back for being able to produce one, because if you remember, I held what well, I could actually do it now, but it's under a part of books. Um, uh, loving the Hangouts, keep them going, uh, is the, the request. So just to, uh, I'll, I'll just dig it out from underneath the pile of books and a cat, and uh, there we go. So that baby is called a Fresnel lens, and it's named after its inventor, who was Augustine Jean Fresnel, uh, and it was first used on a lighthouse um, this is my own research, by the way, uh, at Coudouin in uh, 1823. Wow. And you, and you oh, just happen to heavy, have so one. I'm going to put it down. Well, you rat bag, I've got a Fresnel lens upstairs, so I'll bring it down, maybe. Um, <laughs> also, uh, we love you, really. Um, Roy got in touch as well. This is another one, you know, we've got to get this right, you know. The River Chess is a rare chalk stream fed by the natural springs, which is what we got right in the Metroland episode. As such, it was very important in the production of watercress. Who knew? Uh, which in the Victorian era was transported into London on the Metropolitan Railway. And um, by the way, <laughs> how did you say this word? Was it Chenies? Chen? How did you say it, Chris? Because he says it's pronounced Chenies. How did you do that? Is it? Is it? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, like, Dick, like, like, like Dick Cheney. Like Dick Cheney. Absolutely. Yeah. Just like Dick. Good. Okay. Uh, good. 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 Uh, good. Dave Dick says, thanks for what for me was a really nostalgic episode in Metroland. Back in 1959 to 1962, uh, two types of tube stock just to... FYI, uh, I was an apprentice at RF Halton, the nearest station to which was Wendover. Um, so the Metropolitan Line was the means of getting me to and from London. I remember the train being pulled by a tank engine on several occasions, but was then replaced by an electric train with, I think, Sarah Siddons. I didn't know. Oh, I, yeah. Sarah. Um, 
Sarah still oh. survives today. Yeah, yes, Sarah's still um, chuffing, isn't she? Um, <laughs> if I remember correctly, is that the right one in the museum? It is indeed. Um, so seeing it all again, especially the Rainers Lane station, brought it all back. I also enjoyed the series by John Betjeman on the Bee back in 1973, another tube stock, um, which you can still get on DVD. I'm showing off now. Uh, you might even be able to get it on YouTube, but haven't tried that yet. Looking forward to the next episode on Metroland whenever it comes along. Thanks again and come back, City, because I missed you, says Dave Sticks. Oh, thank you. I missed you too. And I am back. It's only, it was only a, a freak accident last week that I just couldn't make it work with everything else that was going on. Thank you, Siddy. It's nice to have you back. Thank you. Laura Hilton Brown, thank you very much for everything you've done today as well. <laughs> Minimal today, I'm afraid. <laughs> Not a huge yet. amount of knowledge of Marlborough Road, but I hope that everyone enjoyed it and um, well done to Chris for all those amazing pictures and his little kind of solo trip there. Totally. Mm. As Laura and I said, Marlboro Reds, if you remember that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Time for a fag. Chris Nix, as always, you're lovely. Oh, bless you. While I was off doing my little Billy No Mates piece to camera earlier, I, I also got a sneaky look into the last of those stations um on that section of line that are disused the original swiss cottage so if enough people like the idea i think we might come back maybe next series and do swiss cottage i love that now then um don't forget to follow us on instagram you've got alex grunden you've got chris nix you've got city holloway you've got hidden london law and you've got at lt museums to find us dm us if you've got a question about the tube on youtube like us subscribe to us and comment down below. Always make sure you like us because we do chase the likes. Oh, beasts we are. Um, so thank you very much indeed for all of that. Get in touch if you want to. And I'll leave you with this. This was from James the Plonker. Do you remember last week he asked a question about how trains and buses get into and out of the Transport Museum? <clears throat> we answered your question. Well done, Els. And he said, thank you so much for answering my question. It was better than I expected it to be. We expect so much. Um, I've been in <laughs> Hidden London Hangout because before okay. lockdown, I would uh, venture out every Wednesday to ride public transport around London that in a sense helps me stay mentally healthy. We know that feeling really well. Um, so having these videos to watch has helped me to learn so much about the city we live and love and has made me feel like I'm exploring London without going out. So to you four fabulous humans, thank you for making these videos and thank you for being yourselves. I wouldn't normally do this, but I'm going to read my reply as well. Love you, Mr. Plonker. It's been tough for everyone, I know, but I totally understand how lockdown can affect us mentally too, and it has. If it makes you feel any better, all four of us on the team have felt the same. Some days really hurt, some days feel really scary, and others feel really long. But things will get better. Thank you for joining in and joining us as we all try to feel a little bit better together. Keep watching, have a great day, and stay safe. <laughs>